there has been far too little public focus on the fact that PRC hackers are targeting our critical infrastructure, our water treatment plants, our electrical grid, our oil and natural gas pipelines, our transportation systems. Four months, FBI Director Christopher Wray has warned about the threat from China and the risk of cyber attacks leading to physical disruptions, such as forcing a power plant to, uh, to overheat and potentially explode. Just last month, American intelligence agencies warned state-sponsored Chinese hackers spent up to five years inside U.S. networks with the goal of launching such an attack in the event of a crisis. It's the kind of attack that the U.S. has used on its enemies. The Washington Post reported that in 2012, the U.S. and Israeli officials targeted Iran with a cyber weapon known as Stuxnet, a, quote, malware designed to infiltrate and damage systems run by computers. To help us understand this better and the nature of the current threat, let's bring in Dr. Charles Clancy. He's the chief technology officer at MITRE, a not-for-profit fo not profit focused on national security. Thank you so much for joining us. Give us a better sense of what we're exactly dealing with here. What concerns you when we talk about cyber attacks that could have a physical manifestation? Yeah, the scenario that we're most concerned about is where an adversary like Russia or China establishes, uh, I guess what you'd best call a beachhead in um, one of our major power plants, uh, communications infrastructure, rail infrastructure. The idea is that they hack into the system and they establish a foothold that allows them to do something more dangerous in the future. So, for example, if uh, Beijing planned to invade uh, ta Taiwan, um, the assessment of the U.S. intelligence community is that they would launch a large-scale destructive cyber attack against the U.S., specifically designed to prevent us from uh, interfering with their invasion of Taiwan. Uh, this would be designed to impede U.S. decision-making, induce societal panic, and really interfere with the mobilization and deployment of our, of our troops. And so typically this would involve, as you described before, uh, some sort of destructive attack that would knock out our power grid, um, prevent our water from uh, from uh, water systems from functioning properly, uh, prevent our railroads from working, which are, are really necessary for troop mobilization and moving military equipment across the country. So these are the things that um, particularly are concerned about and looking for, I think, new approaches to solve. And Charles, is the, is the second part of this is not only it messes stuff up, but it can Fixing it can take a while. I mean, we know in the case of United Healthcare, which is just which has no physical component, as far as I understand, they've been trying to survive or fix that that cyber hack for a month now. If this is physical, might it take quite some time to? It's not just like you flip some switch and everything's back online. Yeah, certainly there's the initial disruption that would cause a, a lot of conf concern and confusion. Just look at the Colonial Pipeline attack uh, that was done by a ransomware group. This wasn't even intended to really destroy anything. It was really more to hold the, the pipeline hostage. Um, and in that scenario, there really was no destructive attack, but we saw, I don't know, the, the long lines at, at gas stations across the country. Um, and so beyond the sort of near-term uh, sort of anxiety that it induces and the near-term disruption, uh, these destructive attacks can also destroy key pieces of our critical infrastructure uh, that can have a cascading effect across the entire system. And some of the replacement components, we, we really don't have in stock at scale. Power, uh, Large power transformers, for example, um, we don't have that many extra as a country. Uh, and if there are large scale attacks uh, that destroy the ones that are in use, it could be a long time before we can get back online. And last question, what's, what are um, intelligence agencies doing to counter this threat? And, and I assume also private industry has to be worried about this as well. Yeah, we have a complex infrastructure here in the U.S. for defending against these sorts of attacks. The intelligence community's key responsibility is to help us know when such an attack might happen, understand really what's in the head of our adversary so that we can anticipate uh, their actions. Um, certainly, uh, the Department of Homeland Security and private industry have a whole set of programs designed to improve the cybersecurity of these systems. Uh, but my thesis is that the infrastructure that we have today for dealing with these large-scale attacks is uh, kind of a suited for the attacks the last decade. And as we start contemplating these large-scale destructive attacks, uh, we need new approaches. Dr. Charles Clancy, Chief Technology Officer at MITRE. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.